So hello everybody and welcome to another edition of 25 days of Dark Fridays. This time it is for day 19. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, check down below the rules to enter this challenge and it's never too late, so just get started now. If you are stuck or you want to know how I solved day 19, this is the video for you, so let's get started. Okay, so we continue managing orders. Let's see. Day 19 it says, what is the stock value of our dead? stock. So in logistics that stock it means basically products that have been discontinued, products that are damaged, products that do not sell because they are like outdated for example. There's like a wide range of products that will or categories that will be included in that stock. I just specified that I was this was meant for discontinued products only, right? So to make it easier and to make it a bit more limited. Okay, so we're going to do it the, the way that we've been doing it. First without DAX, and then with DAX. Without DAX. It says, what is the stock value of our death stock? So we need to find which products have been discontinued first. So we can drop in product name. We can drop in discontinued. Discontinued is actually a true or false thing. So you can see them here. Uh, so we want to have the value of the discontinued product, so that should be true. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight products that have been discontinued. Now, how many of those are in stock? We need to check that. So stock, stock unit, we have there. So not all of them are in stock, we have a few. And then we have how many, um, with the unit price, right? So in order to calculate the stock value, we multiply the price, basically it should be the cost, but the price, I don't think I have cost here, price times um, the, the number of units, so we will know the value actually. Um, so unit price, there we have it, okay? So what you would do now, you would do it in Excel, you would multiply these by these, and then you get the result, right? So we're going to export these to Excel because otherwise we need to use DAX and the idea is to do without DAX. So I have multiplied the unit price times the unit in stock and then done the sum. So we have like $4,400 of death stock in our inventory. Now, how do we do this with DAX? It's not as straightforward as you may think, you, you know? Sometimes with DAX, like, the difficult things are easy and the easy things are just complicated. But it's just the way that, it, you know, DAX engine is built and that makes it a little bit hard sometimes. So, we're going to our measure table and we're going to do day... Well, day 19, right? So, day 19. And uh, you might be tempted to do this. You say, okay, Ruth, this is easy. Calculate. And then we do unit price times units, stock units, stock units, right? And then the product discontinues true, right? As a beginner, that uh, that would be the first thing that I would try. Probably not even as a beginner, I would just try it. I'm well. No, now I know that doing that type of multiplication is just never works. But let me show you. So if we put this in a card, it says that we have oh, there are these over. none. We have thirty-eight thousand dollars in death stock. Do you remember what the number was? Let me remind you. So when we did it in Excel, we got. $4,400. Why are we getting $38,000? This is a grand total problem, right? So if you look carefully, you're going to see that the actual numbers, oh, well, we didn't calculate it, but if you would put this measure into the table, maybe we should do it. Let's put day 19 in there, right? And now if we compare them side by side, you can see the row by row is doing it correctly, but then suddenly we get another number on the grand totals. What is that? What it's doing is, in Excel, you tell them, okay, then go up, like we did here. We calculate row by row, and then we say, here, do the sum. 
Power BI and DAX does not do that from the ground totals. What it does is it goes and do, does the same that it did on the row. It does it on this ground total. So it will go sum of all of these. And then it will go sum of all of these. And then it will go these times these. And then you get the 38,000. Do you see it? And that's not what we want, right? For the ground totals, we don't want to multiply the sum. We want to sum the result. So every time you're multiplicating something row by row, that's the price you pay, okay? Now, there are ways to solve it, actually. You can do the grand total trick, or as we're learning with these 25 days of Dark Fridays, there are other ways. Like, you can create other types of summarizations that will give you the correct result. In our case, the simplest way to fix this is just instead of doing, well, you will do unit price times stock unit, but you will do in a sum of products. Let me see where you are. So when it gets to the grand total, sum, do not do the boom, boom, boom. <laughs> that, that, that does not help. Okay, so the sum x is actually forced in it to sum at the end. It will create, to be very precise, what I think this is happening is that it's creating our table, this table, these ones, the rows tables. And at the end, the sum x is saying, okay, and now we're going to get the great totals, we sum it. And it passes that to calculate, right? So that's the difference. And again, there are a million ways to solve it. This is one of them, okay? So, how are you enjoying this so far? What tax measure did you use to solve this? And how many have you had? Right? I will see you again tomorrow with day 20. We're getting closer to the end.